Engine Company 9 and Associates Incorporated was organized in September 1992 as an organization of pioneer former retired personnel of professional firefighters, law enforcement officers, and associates of the city of Richmond and metropolitan area. We pledge to preserve, protect, and promote the history of those courageous men and women who served as the first hires of African descent in the Richmond area. Today, we are highlighting our firefighters. On July 1st, 1950, the department hired its first Negro firefighters to form the first black unit in the city. 10 men were selected from 500 applicants. They were as follows, Charles L. Bell, William E. Brown, Douglas P. Evans, Harvey S. Hicks II, Warren W. Kersey, Bernard C. Lewis, Farrer Lucas, Lucas, I'm sorry, Arthur L. Page, Arthur St. C. John, and Linwood M. Wooldridge. Arthur C. St. John was called to return to the military in 1950, and Frederick Drake J. Robinson was hired in his place. When Farrer Lucas resigned in 1951, Oscar L. Blake was hired. All of the black firefighters were assigned to engine company number nine at 5th and Duval Streets, where we are today. On June 14, 1963, Two members of Engine Company 9 lost their lives. Captain Harvey S. Hicks II and Douglas P. Evans during a rescue attempt. Engine Company 9 was demolished in 1968. On Saturday, July 1st, 2000, that location became a historical marker as you see here. Today, we mark the 71st anniversary of the hiring of the first black career firefighters in the city of Richmond, who by the way, just happened to be the first black firefighters hired in the Commonwealth of Virginia. Yeah. You know, back in 1858, when the first fire brigade was organized in Richmond, the city council authorized using slaves to supplement the 100 or so white firefighters on duty. But it wasn't until 92 years later, in July of 1950, that 10 African Americans were hired and paid to work in engine company number nine, which was located right here at Fifth and Duval. That firehouse, as you can see, is no longer here. But the legacy of service and the significant contributions and accomplishment of that first group and all those who follow lives on today. Breaking barriers is never easy. And it wasn't for these brave men. You see, Richmond in the early 1950s was a lot different than Richmond in 2021. Back then, there were actually some fire stations in the city where black firefighters were not even allowed to go through the front door. Imagine that. Black firefighters were also required to do more menial non-firefighter work, such as cutting grass and painting city buildings and delivering laundry. On the first, one of the first, Oscar Blake recalled responding to a fire at the home of an elderly white man who refused to let him in to enter refused to let him enter to fight the fire in his own house. Imagine that. But these men persevered. They endured. They sacrificed and they served. I think it's appropriate to point out it was okay for black men to cut the grass, to pick up the trash, but it was not okay for black men to be firefighters, police officers in the city of Richmond, to save lives in the city. That's the value that was placed on black men and black lives at that time. Now, years later, the results are significant. 
and have made Richmond a better and safer city, a more inclusive and welcoming city. See, in 1963, the city started integrating the fire service. And in 1978, the first, the, the city hired its first black fire chief. And a year later, the first African-American female firefighter was also hired. I often say that those of us who have the opportunity to serve in positions of leadership and public trust do not get to these places by ourselves. Remember, we are standing on the shoulders of giants, those who are heroes and sheroes who made Richmond better before we even got here. Men and women whose courage and determination forges a path for future generations to pursue their dreams by giving the opportunity for all of us to succeed. The opportunity to be judged, as Dr. King once said, on the content of their character and not the color of their skin. That is why we honor these first firefighters each and every year and celebrate this day, not just for what they did, but for what they allowed the rest of us to do. Right? What they allowed the rest of us to do. We are a better city because of that day, and it is our charge to continue the work before us to be a better, more equitable, and inclusive city, not just for today, but for tomorrow. Happy birthday. I am honored to bring greetings on behalf of the Richmond City Council and I am joined today by Vice President Robertson, but also Councilwoman Catherine Jordan in bringing greetings. And in recognizing, and in recognizing the greatness that this memorial captures here, in recognizing the distinguished roster of Richmond's and Virginia's first firefighters of African-American descent, and I know we've read the names before, but I think it's worthy to hear them again. And so we're talking about Mr. Charles L. Bell, Mr. William E. Brown, Mr. Douglas P. Evans, Mr. Harvey S. Hicks II, Mr. Warren W. Kersey, Mr. Farrar Lucas, Mr. Bernard Lewis, Mr. Arthur Page, all right, thank you. Thank you, and thank you for sharing him with us. Mr. Arthur C. St. John and Linwood M. Woodridge. Arthur C. St. John was recalled to military in 1950, as was shared before, and Farrar Lucas resigned in 1951. Their vacancies were filled by Frederick Robinson and Oscar. <laughs> Thank you for loaning him to us. By Frederick Robinson and Oscar Blake, respectively. All right. All right. All right. All right. And I'm going to ask Ms. Jordan if you would come up with us as well. This is on behalf of City Council. Again, um, the pioneering efforts of these outstanding individuals are tribute to their dedication, strength, and personal achievement and mark the continued progress of Virginia and Richmond and the Richmond Department of Fire and Emergency Services in leading the way for progress during a disgraceful time in our nation's history when the practice of racial segregation denied many people equal education, work opportunity, facilities, and accommodations. In 2019, Richmond City Council further established and did establish the recognition of July 1 as the Richmond and Virginia anniversary of hiring the first career firefighters of African American descent and set that date in permanence and in perpetuity for that purpose. So we will always recognize on this date and stand on this space. And Ms. Squire, I, I just want to thank you for ensuring, and all of you who coordinated this, that we will never have hidden figures, as we all know right. something woo, about, woo, woo. because of your efforts. You. Really just want to say thank you. We stand on the shoulders of greatness, absolutely, and we cannot thank them enough. We cannot recognize them and all of you enough. And so, therefore, Richmond City Council, again, reaffirms the day of July 1st, as we had as the 
as the Richmond and Virginia anniversary of hiring the first career firefighters of African American descent, we acknowledge these trailblazing firefighters, trailblazing firefighters, and herald this important chapter in the advancement of our city's progressive narrative arc on behalf of all of its residents. I simply want to say thank you again to all of you who worked to coordinate this event, chiefs, chiefs, family members who lent your husbands, uncles, brothers to us in service to the city, in service to the city. And we simply say thank you. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> I, just, I, I, know I, I know I was on the agenda, so I don't want to pass up what was on the agenda. Um, uh, I had a little proclamation that I was going to present. I'm going to pass that on, uh, but I'm not going to read it. And I just want to say to all of you, thank you so very much. Um, I was listening to a documentary this morning about uh, the failure of this country to recognize the contribution of African Americans stepping up to be firefighters for such a long time and to commend uh, all of the citizens of the city of Richmond for the progress that we have made to make sure that opportunities are made available to all people and that we value the significance of all people in the process. But listening to the documentary, I, it, it created a greater sense of, of awareness and appreciation to think that there are persons that come to work as a firefighter who from one moment to the next never know when that phone call is going to be made and there's a fire somewhere. And we never know whether it's going to be your home, my home, whether it's going to be your family, or your neighbor's family, or just just the neighbor next door that you may or may not know. But to have courageous, professional people, men and women of our fire fighting department that will get on that truck and arm themselves, not knowing whether or not they will come out of the most horrendous enemy that we have that a, what a fire can do to go in under any circumstance and risk their lives to protect us. A gratitude of thanks is little that we can do to express our appreciation for such a heroic profession and opportunity that we have courageous, strong, and yeah, African-American men and women, and all the other ones as well, but today we're celebrating. And I want to say happy birthday and happy anniversary as well. As I look around the crowd, uh, one of the things that I can truly say is that we are all connected in some way, shape, form, or fashion. Uh, connected by church. My buddy, and Gar my buddy Gary Flowers over there, sitting in the balcony of Ebenezer Baptist Church, you know? Uh, my pastor, Brenda Somerset. Uh, people I went to school with, uh, Antoinette Urban, babysitting my younger brother. <laughs> you know, so we are all one family and really connected. Um, I want to talk about perseverance today. Richmond Fire Department has been around since 1858. They hired their first African Americans in 1950. The things that those men had to endure, had to put up with, had to overcome, had to go around, it was just simply amazing. Some of the things that they had to do would be simply unconscionable today in the modern fire service. But yet they what? Persevered. And that's what we have to do. We have to remember that spirit. We have to honor that spirit. They were committed. It's not easy being a firefighter. It truly isn't. But since 1950, our gear has improved. Our standards have improved. Our strategic tactics have improved. Our approach to community service has improved. But the one thing that did not need to improve then or today is courage. Because the men of 1950, 
the courage that they embody is living and living well today in our fire department. And so, yes, absolutely. So much so that two men on this marker behind me paid the ultimate sacrifice, risking their lives to save others so that they may live. Their perseverance and return on investment led to myself being the 21st fire chief for the city of Richmond. I was born on July 4th of 1963. July 4th, just think about the significance of that. Two days later, the Richmond Fire Department will be integrated. And nearly 50 plus years later, I would become the city's first homegrown fire chief. So, how remarkable is that? And as Mayor Stoney said earlier, our recruitment effort that's been three weeks in the making is one of the most diverse recruitment efforts we've ever had, at least in my time in the Richmond Fire Department. We leaned on Richmond Public Schools. We leaned on our faith community. We leaned on the business community. We leaned on every facet of the Richmond community life to ensure that everyone has equal and unabated access to these careers. These careers changed jobs for decades, for generations. And as the 10 men, the marker behind us, were living examples of what commitment to a vision, a belief in their community so that others like myself and other Richmond firefighters that have long since retired could be inspired to one day pick up that mantle and show others that this too is possible. So my friends and my family, anything is possible if we commit to it, if we call it out when we see it, these men lived through that. They called it out. They didn't shy away from their calling. I won't shirk or shy away from my calling. And so I thank you today for being here. I thank you for honoring the 10 that was hired, not only in the state, but, in the, but especially our city of Richmond. And I look forward to one day building a fire station in the city of Richmond, the station number nine that brings back the honor of these men. We have a very special segment in our program today, Lighting the Way. Last year, we lost three members of engine company number nine. We lost Mr. Jones of the police department, and we lost Mr. Bernard C. Lewis, who was the last surviving member of the original 10 last year, and Mr. Robert Neal. Due to COVID, we had to postpone the program that we would have had last year. So today, we remember them for their courage, their strength, and their dedication to the citizens of Richmond and beyond. Although their service was with the police and fire department, they lighted other pathways so that we all could have a better life. In our own way, let us continue to radiate the fullness of who they were. In February 2019 edition of the Key Awareness, there was an article that stated, Heroes Among Us. Uh, and it showed the original firefighters and the original police officers with the first woman hired. Uh, and I'll keep this article close by so whenever I want to look at something and uplift my spirit, that helps me. Heroes Among Us, we cannot argue with that. We certainly agree, that is a true statement. They were great role models. So in their honor and memory today, family members was asked to make remarks if they so desire and come and light a candle. So will the family of Willie C. Jones come forth now? Good evening, everybody. Just want to say thank you for honoring my father. I appreciate it. And I'm not a long-winded person, so thank you again. <laughs> Good afternoon. I just want to thank you all for honoring my grandfather. This would have meant so much to him to be present for this, but I know he's looking down and so grateful just to be recognized for his hard work and dedication to what he's done to the city. So thank you all and thank you, Ms. Squire. I talked to Mrs. Lewis before leaving home and she said this was not a real good day for her, but she did want everybody to know that she appreciated your kindness and your love that was extended to her and Mr. Lewis. And she said, Mr. Lewis loved the fire department. 
whenever he had to go to the hospital or something like that, he didn't want an ambulance to come pick him up. He wanted the fireman to come and pick him up and take him there because that's what he wanted and that's what he got. He always seemed to perk up when he was around them. Okay, now Mr. Bob Neal's family. Anyone from Mr. Neal's family here? You I talk church family to come. <laughs> That's good enough. We are the church family of Robert Neal. Uh, we have been knowing Bobby before he even got married. And he was a good man. And he followed after my father. And he too loved the fire department. And so I know that looking from above, he is so grateful that you all have taken the time to honor him today. Now we will entertain reflections from our guests, members of Engine Company number nine. If you have anything that you would like to add to the program at this time, I'm going to ask you to be brief, but please let us know. Uh, as uh, I think Mr. Page family members are here. I talked with her on yesterday and have some comments you'd like to make. Good afternoon, all assembled guests. Uh, we are just so honored to be here today. Uh, I'm going to bring all my family up. I got them all up. That's <laughs> <laughs> his, I'm his daughter, the oldest one. This is his grandson. That's his granddaughter. And these are the great grands. <laughs> We are so honored to be here today. Um, don't listen to me while I tell my age. <laughs> I was three years old when uh, my dad got inducted into uh, the fire department. And I don't remember then, but I remember him uh, studying and I remember him getting uh, refused. He earned positions, but I remember him getting turned away not because of the content of his character, but because of the color of his skin. But my dad always taught us. I would see him hurt, and a couple of times was the first time I had actually seen him cry. But he told us, it's okay. I won't give up. Like Chief Carter said, I will persevere. I won't give up. I will keep trying. I'll keep my nose clean, I'll remain a gentleman. And those are things that he uh, instilled in my sister and myself and his grandchildren. To persevere, keep your nose clean, remain a lady, remain a gentleman. There are ways to protest, but you can protest peacefully. And he always instilled in, in, in that into us, and I appreciate that. I appreciate, I applaud and I appreciate all the men of engine number nine. They were like brothers. Talk about fraternity. They were a fraternity. They stuck together. They played together. They prayed together. Um, so I am just honored today and so appreciative that Ms. Quire and others have um, organized this event. And so um, <laughs> no, we just want to say thank you, um, and we're proud of the legacy that my grandfather left, as well as um, the rest of the uh, engine number nine. So this is a great day in uh, African American history, and we're proud to be here. My name is Brenda Blake Somerset. I am the oldest daughter of Oscar L. Blake Sr. I was also the oldest fire baby when the firemen were established. I'm 76, everybody else is younger than I am, but there are so many memories that each of us could express to you about that uh, fire station and those firemen. I got the opportunity to slide down the pole, which to a six-year-old was just the most wonderful thing in the world. All of these men, as Sister Page has said, they were men of quality, not just intelligence, but they had great character, and they 
expose that character to so many others. There were a lot of men, even Melvin, who was a member of the church where my father attended, was influenced by this great man. So each and every fireman who is assembled here today stands on the backs of great men. Men who loved the work that they did, men who loved each other, and men who had the city of Richmond in their best interest. So Sister Squire, thank you. And all of the associates of engine number nine for the efforts that you put into celebrating our men. Thank you. Greetings, everyone. Hello. I wish to thank each of you and especially the fire department for recognizing my brother, Brother Frederick D. Robinson. And he was such a, a lover of the firefighters until his last breath. He talked about the firefighters. And I am happy to be here today to say to each of you, thank you for recognizing and remembering my brother, Frederick Robinson. Amen.